Every web developer needs a digital portfolio and I thought I might share my portfolio with you from when I was a beginner and hopefully get your creative juices flowing or give you a good laugh. <laughs> Let's go. So I use this cool feature on GitHub called GitHub Pages. It allows you to host a website through them for free. Uh, all you have to do is push up your code and everything just like you would any other application and it's instantly live. Now before we get started, I would like to say I am still embarrassed about my portfolio. I was a newbie, my design skills suck, but I tried my best and I actually wanted to use this as a testing platform to try out new things, to show what I can do, and to just experiment a lot. So it was ever growing, ever changing, and I will say I am proud of that aspect. So let's get started. Okay, so first we are gonna go to my website. It is on GitHub pages, like I said, which means it ends with github.io. That's the only difference between um, having it hosted and having a .com is that you now have to accept that it's gonna end with github.io. All right, so I definitely, again, wanted to highlight my first name and what I was going for. I decided not to use my picture and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but everything is mine. I took the pictures in the background, I took the pictures of the flowers, all of that, and the theme was coffee house. <laughs> And I will say that is one thing, the first thing that I will point out that I did well is I have a consistent theme throughout. Next is the about me feature. I wanted to have a summary without having a summary, if that makes sense. Um, so on my resume, I feel like I had a, a static summary that I worked really hard on, but I still hate it. So this gave me a chance to be more flexible, to be a little bit more creative and fun and to really show my personality. Next, I learned how to make this cool graph and I thought that was fun and cool and I experimented with um, making this from scratch. And then there are my projects. So the first project was from the one I did at Ruby for Good, which is a conference where you build a application from scratch with a team for a not-for-profit organization. You can check out the code, but because of how they're situated and their rules, I could not put the website on here. And then there are my three projects, my three major projects that I did in uh, my coding bootcamp, General Assembly. Uh, they were the three that I was more proud of. So I had another one, but I didn't really like it. And I had smaller ones and I didn't really feel confident about those. So these were my best three. I put a link to the live code, which is on Oh, what did I put it on Heroku, as well as the code from GitHub. And then this was a feature that I really thought was important was to actually have a printable link to my resume, the PDF resume. And finally, links to uh, all my social media so you can get in contact with me. And that's pretty much my portfolio. Um, kind of a, well, pretty much a static website that has a whole lot of JavaScript and pictures and stuff. Uh, not super fancy like you see nowadays, but I feel like there are a lot of, well, five points that I think a good portfolio should have. So one thing that I'm still really proud of is that I had a consistent theme throughout. The theme was coffee house. I kept up with the chalk board look, black background, chalk, chalk. Um, these little coffee stains, a computer, which you find in most coffee houses because people are usually working at them, and then a cool picture of um, a coffee mug with the steam in motion. Next, I think it's always great to show the projects that you are proud of, that you don't mind talking about in an interview, and that you can go to and show them how it works and what you want to improve on and what you're really proud of during that interview process. Again, I wanna point out that it's always important to have a link to your resume so that anybody can print it out whenever they're ready, especially if you are clumsy like me and you mistakenly drop your resume on the ground and it gets wet. Now you have a way to access your resume for anybody to print out. Another great thing 
always good to have is links to your GitHub page, your LinkedIn, a way for them to email you, and any other thing that is clean and available for anybody to contact you through. So if you're gonna put Twitter, make sure you are consistently clean and uh, proud of your Twitter and it's presentable to anybody who uh, might be trying to hire you for a job. And then lastly, a feature that I really like was I made it mobile. Uh, I made it so that once it gets smaller, things change a little bit. So this was the graph. I just made it so that with icons, everything can get smaller so that when it's on a phone, which most people view the internet nowadays is through their uh, smartphone. So I just wanted to make sure that it was readily available for anybody who was in a hurry and needed to see my portfolio on their phone. Now, now that those are some good points, I do want to say that there are bad points. I know you see them. I know that it's a bit embarrassing, but I think that if I was gonna ever redo this portfolio in particular, I would change at least three things, if not more. But these three things I would definitely change. So I would put my contact information at the top, somewhere at the top. I mean, it's good to know that my name is Anissa and that I'm trying to be a web developer or that I am a web developer, but I think having that contact information really available is most important because, I mean, if you're trying to get a job, maybe they forgot uh, your resume, but they remember that you're online and now they're trying to find how to contact you. So having that contact information at the top is important. Also, I think instead of trying to design the whole thing myself, I would go through something like Wix or find somebody who needs practice designing and get them to design it for me. My design skills are just not great at all um, at work. I mostly use Bootstrap, so I don't really have to design. And we have a web designer at my job, so I don't have to design at all. I just have to take their designs and make it look like what they have on their wireframes. And then lastly, I would probably say I would put my picture somewhere. Now, I did not put my picture on my resume. I did not put it on my portfolio. I did not put it on business cards. I really feel like at the time, and maybe now, there was a stigma against black people or just hiring them in general, and I never wanted my skin color to be something that stops somebody from hiring me. I wanted that first interview to be the first time that they were like, oh, she's black. Well, that's good. Instead of seeing it online and being like, no, we're not gonna call her in. But now that I have experience and I am more confident, I feel like that should never be a reason why somebody doesn't hire you. If it is, then you probably don't wanna work there anyway. And I, I feel like I wanna be a, a good representation for other people and hey, I look good, so. <laughs> well, that was my portfolio. I hope you liked it, or at least figured out what you don't like so you won't do the same thing. Um, I would take this as an opportunity to do research on other people's portfolios. There are a lot out there that are available for you to pick and choose what you do and don't like and be creative and make your own. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click subscribe or at least give it a thumbs up and comment below. All right, go forth and prosper. Bye.